Over the past few decades in Chicago, the city has undergone a dramatic transformation in its most underprivileged neighborhoods. In these neighborhoods, money and time are being reinvested in order to create new boutiques, restaurants, and the other amenities for residents. While at first, these changes in the neighborhood appear to be an apt response to curb high crime rates and a lack of infrastructure, these new developments can also be detrimental. This change is called gentrification. Gentrification is defined by the process of renovating and improving a house or district so that it conforms to a middle-class taste. Definitions like these, however, fail to adjust the racial, economic, and social problems gentrification exposes and creates in our cities. Chicago has had a long history of discriminatory housing in its 77 neighborhoods, and some argue gentrification is a new variation of these unfair practices. With this project, I want to address how gentrification impacts people's identities in their communities. One example out of the many that exist to show how gentrification especially changes minority neighborhoods is the Pilsen neighborhood in Chicago. In the 1960s and 70s, Pilsen became the most prominent neighborhood in Chicago's Mexican culture. This neighborhood became a home away from home for people, and today, rapid gentrification is pushing the Mexican community out. Developers and outside writers tell this change is being necessary in order to create a better future for the neighborhood, but herein lies my biggest concern of gentrification. It focuses on communities that may exist in the coming decades instead of finding smart, sustainable ways to preserve the communities that already exist. According to a study done by the University of Illinois at Chicago, 10,000 Mexican people in Pilsen have already moved since 2000. And within this community, Casa Atzlan provides a great visual to see how gentrification occurs. Casa Atzlan, a Mexican-American community center, was painted over gray by developers who bought the building in 2017. Although the center had been closed since 2013, this building was still a part of the Pilsen neighborhood, often called the heart of the Mexican community in Chicago. After public outcry, the mural was repainted, but this shows how little outside developers and investors cared about the people already living in these neighborhoods. For years, research and opinion pieces have attempted to decide if gentrification is a natural trend that follows the market or if it is the conscious effort to remove minorities. Whatever the case may be, people's lives are still being affected. As planning and architecture students, we should care about how people are affected by new developments in their neighborhoods. I know change in urban life is inevitable, but that still does not change the fact that we need to protect people from injustices in these neighborhoods. We should proactively encourage projects that provide much-needed infrastructure and ensure people are empowered and given enough economic support. People in these communities, their support systems, and the memories that they've made for themselves there need to be respected and taken care of. In an interview I did with my cousin, she said the following quote, There are smart and sustainable ways to curb and control gentrification and change in cities that benefit all residents. The spirit and heart of a neighborhood doesn't have to be sacrificed for progress. Real progress would be challenging this model of housing in order to preserve cultures and urban life.